Hey everyone, welcome back. So we had just set up the backbone of the power-up system and created the invincibility power-up, and now we're going to be working on the guns. So let's revisit the create bullet script because that's where we were creating the bullets and that's what we're going to modify. So in addition to setting the speed of the bullet and the direction, which we were getting from argument zero and one right there, I'm also going to set up another argument that will allow us to declare what kind of gun we will shoot with. So remember we had variants with two guns, three guns, four and eight. So I'm going to make this effect kind of an optional argument so that we don't have to put anything, for example, in the enemy's use of the create bullet script. Basically so that we can just leave it as this, but in the player, when we shoot, I'm going to make it so that we can pass in our guns argument and then whatever guns we have will correspond to the number of bullets we create in here. So we're going to get that argument in here. So I'll set up another temporary variable and we're going to call this one gun type. And we're going to have a default value. It's going to be minus one. Because remember, our minus one is kind of the same number that we're using for the player when the player doesn't have any gun effects on it. When that's the case, it's equal to minus one. That's going to mean basically just use one gun as normal. Now all we have to do is if we have supplied another argument, the gun argument, then we want to change this. We want to overwrite this minus one to an actual value. So first, uh, to make this actually optional, the way we do that is we can check how many arguments we've supplied to the script. If we've only supplied two, then we don't want to make this change. But if we have supplied more than two, then we will. So we are going to check how many arguments we've given it, the argument count. So if that is greater than two, then we know that we have a gun argument. So we are going to update gun type to equal argument two, right? Because that will be the third argument. Remember, it starts at zero. Cool. So now we have the gun type. Now we have to change how this script actually works because we want to be creating different things depending on what this gun type is equal to. So. A lot of this code is going to get reused for the guns. So for example, we'll probably want to pass over a lot of these variables to all of the bullets that we create, but still we want to be doing different things depending on what this gun type is. So I'm going to put in a big switch statement and we'll do that here. Now the value that we're switching, of course, is gun type. So depending on what that is equal to, that will determine our logic now. So remember that this gun type is supposed to correspond to our power ups variables. So two bullets would be the same as zero. It's frame zero. So that's that will be our case for the guns. If it is frame zero, then we want to be creating two bullets. Same with this one. Three bullets would be the first frame, the second frame, third and four. And remember, our invincibility was five. So in here, zero is these two bullets case. Let's just set up those cases really quickly. So zero, one, two, three, four. And we actually need a last one and I'm going to make a default case. So if it's not equal to any of those, then it will pick the default and that would be just normal, right? So that would be if gun type is still equal to minus one. In that case, then I want to be doing all of this stuff. So I can kind of copy this over into here. In fact, I can cut that all out and paste it here. Now, like I said, I want to be doing this probably in all of my cases, but I don't want to be pasting this, for example, eight times when we create the eight star bullets. So I'm actually going to generalize all of this into a script. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to create a new script called initialize bullet. And then that's where we will be doing all of this stuff. Now we have to be careful. Remember that this was being applied to some kind of value called new bullet, but we don't have access to that right now because we're in a new script. So we need to pass that in. So let's assume that we've done that. We'll set up a new temporary variable called new bullet. 
Now, just for a second, I want to head back to create bullets so that we understand what we need to pass into this. Basically, all of these variables up here, we will also need to pass into the script when we call it. So if we run initialize bullet, I need to pass in the direction, right? Which was der, the speed and the ID of the new bullet. This one right here, which we got from actually creating it. Now I want to actually transfer a lot of these over to the other script because that script is the one that's going to be handling the faction and image blend and creator and setting up all of that stuff. So I'm going to copy this and put that in here. And this is quite handy because the order of the arguments has actually ended up being exactly the same. We can actually add this new bullet temporary variable to this list now. We don't need the gun type anymore. That's only needed by the other script, but we will need the rest. So heading back to the create bullet again, we can get rid of all of these ones, except for the gun type, because that is important for what we're about to do. All right. So within here, it should be passing over all of the correct variables into the new bullet instance. We just have to tell it what argument to get that from. Remember that was argument number two. Awesome. And now this will work. It will be applying it to the new bullet and it will be passing this stuff over. All right, good. So that is the initialized bullet script set up. And now we have just one place where we're setting up all of the bullets. So especially in the future, if we ever change this, we don't have to change it in perhaps 15 different places if we copied and pasted it. This means that we only have to change it in one. So it's a nice way of organizing it. So now we can head back to the create bullet. We know that our initialized bullet script is going to work here and we can start working on the rest of the cases. So I am putting this audio inside the cases as well, because not all of them will be playing the same sound effect. I'm going to get the laser to play a different one. This one right here, case number four, which was our fifth actually frame. But I will copy all of these over to our two bullets one because it will be quite similar. We're just going to be creating two bullets. So what I'm actually going to do is just copy and paste that. Now, the only thing is that I don't want them being created both right on top of the player, which they are right now. If that happens, it's going to look like the player's just created one bullet, which is not what we want. But to get it to offset in a nice way, it's not as simple as just putting something like four here and minus four on the other one, because that would mean a really specific position on the player, irrespective of where the player is facing. We want it to be relative to where the player is facing. So we're actually going to need to use some vector maths and specifically we're going to use a function for this. And I'm just going to drag that in here. And this function is called length duh, and there is an X and Y variant for this. I'm actually going to open up the documentation for it. So for example, if the player is facing in this direction, right? So facing along this diagonal, this is, would actually be 45 degrees. The directions in Game Maker use the same directions as the unit circle would. So zero starts pointing off to the right, and then we increase anti-clockwise around the circle. So as I said, if the player is facing 45 degrees, the way that I want to offset it kind of slightly left and right of where the player is facing, that's going to be plus and minus 90 degrees from where the player is facing. So we do know the direction that we want for each of these bullets. Now we just have to kind of move them along those vectors to a position away from the player. So that's where this length argument comes in. So we can say, for example, I want to offset it four along the vector minus 90 degrees from this one at a length of 12. And then that will give us the exact amount along the X axis and the Y axis with the other length to Y function that it will need to move relative to the player's position. So I'm actually going to do this within here because we can type the function like this. So we can go length to x and so like I said we need a length first up and because I want to use kind of the same numbers for all of these I'm going to quickly set up a temporary variable. I'll call this sep for separation 
And I'm just going to set that to 12. You can play with that number if you want, but I think that looks quite good. So we are going to put in sep for the length and then for the direction, exactly as I said, we know that's going to be wherever the player or wherever the enemies are facing. So that would be the der argument that we got from argument zero of the script. But we do want to subtract 90. So we'll do the subtract 90 one first. And the same for the y, we just have to change length to y. And I'm going to copy that down here and we'll do plus 90 in this one. And just change that one to y. Cool, so that will offset these two bullets along the vector 90 degrees, positive and negative, relative to where the player is facing. And then our initialized bullet should set up both of those. Now, we actually should be able to do a very similar thing for the three bullet power up, which is would be creating three of them. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna copy paste this. The only difference is that when I create the third one, I'm just gonna make it actually where the player is facing. So we're gonna kind of go back to normal. So what you could do is just get rid of this 90 or you could get rid of this and put it back to zero. Maybe it would look cool if I just offset it ahead of the player. It'll look a bit different than the normal bullet. So maybe I'll do that. There we go. And that's our three bullets. So I think we're ready to test those two. Let's come over to the power up because I want to change it from the invincibility first to, let's do the two bullets. So let's set that to zero and we'll run the game. There we go. And we can shoot two bullets and it does look like it is offsetting it properly. All right, good. Now let's test the three bullets one. So that's image index one. So the three bullets, there we go. And it's creating three. All right, so that's looking really good. So let's move on to the four bullets. Let's head back to the create bullet script. Again, I'm going to copy these bits over. Here, so this was the four bullet case. So we'll paste that in. Now this is going to work a bit differently. We're not just offsetting it. We could just repeat it one more time to make it go off in four directions and also make sure that we're changing the bullets direction. But instead, I think because they're going to be created at precisely 90 degree intervals. So in front of the player, 90 degrees off again and then one more time for the four bullets and then the eight would be just 45 degrees apart. We can actually use a for loop for this. So I might firstly just reduce this a little bit so that it lines up with my four bullet sprite a little bit better. Again, you can play around with those numbers. And now I'm going to bring in a for loop. So now this is similar to a repeat loop, but it sets up a little bit more for us. So this will loop until this condition is no longer true. So in the default kind of setup that it gives us, it sets i to zero. It's going to every loop increment i by one, which is what this bit here means. And it's going to keep doing this 10 times. So every loop i is going to add one to itself until it becomes, let's say nine. So on that loop, on the 10th loop, when it increments one more time, when it checks this, this will no longer be true. I will no longer be less than 10, so it will close the loop. So for us to get it to loop four times, we wanna set that to four, because if you think about it, it starts at zero, it increments to one, two, three, and that would be four loops. And then the next time it tries to loop, it would check that and that would no longer be true. So it starts at zero, ends at three, that would be four. Now, one thing we can do is tick this because we don't need to remember what i is. We can just make that a temporary variable. And I'm going to bring this over to here. And let's just grab the initialized bullet script as well. Now we have to change this a little bit. So we're no longer doing a straight up subtraction. We kind of want to use this i incrementer to know what loop we're on, because basically we're going to be just adding 90 every time. We'll start on zero times 90, then one times 90, two times 90, and three times 90. So that will cover all of our directions. So what I'm gonna do is make a temporary variable that calculates just that. I'll call this bullet angle. 
this is going to be whatever the player's current direction is, like I said, plus i times 90. So that means wherever the player is facing will kind of be the first one because it would be player direction plus i, which would be zero times 90. So that would be zero plus the current direction. And then every time it loops, it'll add 90, like I said. Cool, so now we have this stand-in temporary variable. We can get rid of all of this and put that in here. Now, if we just leave it like that, the bullets will still be made to fly off in the player's direction, which is not what we want. We want it to fly off in the direction that it's been offset to the ship so that it's kind of shooting off in those 90 degree angles. So I'm gonna replace der with bullet angle. Great, and it'll be doing that now four times, creating all of our bullets. I can copy this over to the next one because the only thing we need to change is the angle and the number of times that we're looping. So we wanna loop eight times now and we want the angle difference to just be 45. That would be 45 increments to create eight bullets. But all of this would be the same. All right, so this is probably a good time to test it. Again, let's head over to the power up. We can set this to two. So this will be testing the four bullets. There we go. And when we shoot, there you go. It's going off in four different directions. Notice that it will kind of look differently depending on where you're going because the bullets relative to the ship will be different. So it creates a kind of interesting effect. All right, and now we'll test the eight bullets. Run that. There we go, so that's pretty cool. It's going off in all eight directions. All right, so now all that's left to do is make the laser and then actually set up the spawning of the power-ups. So we'll do that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, I'll see you there.